Thank you to anyone that's joining us today. We're gonna to get started in just a moment. We're just giving folks a second here to log in and get settled. If you have any questions for Mr. Tom Nichols during the presentation, you can enter them into the chat panel or the Q&A panel and we will get to those for you. Or if you're feeling brave, you can use the raise your hand tool as now you can modify your controls so you can unmute your line and ask it live. Again, thanks for joining us. We will begin in just a moment. Okay, well, according to my clock, I've got 11 o'clock Pacific time straight up. So I want to uh, thank the attendees. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. My name is Tom Nichols. I am the Disability Insurance Sales and Marketing Manager with CPS Insurance. And again, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit in on our presentation. I'm going to try to hold this to a hard 19 minutes. I uh, respect your time and want to make sure that everybody gets through this and gets the information that they're looking for. So I'm going to dive right into our presentation today. And uh, we're going to share three sales ideas real quick for you. But I want to give a little bit of uh, a little disability insurance 101, if you will, because um, this, is, this is important, I think, when people talk about the word disability in everybody's mind's eye, what does that really look like? And it, most people, it's gonna be wheelchairs, it's gonna be hospital beds, it's gonna be uh, walkers being incapacitated. And so we try not to use the word disability if we can, at possible. Uh, more like an income protection plan if you get sick or hurt is a, is a better way of approaching clients, engaging them to say, do you have an income protection plan if you get sick or hurt? People can relate so much more to getting sick or hurt than uh, becoming disabled. And they hear the word disability and a roadblock goes up and they go, no, that would never happen to me. So if you can kind of say it out loud a few times, income protection, if you get sick or hurt and get accustomed to using it that way, I think your clients will be much more approachable uh, to the idea of protecting their income. But I wanna give you some raw statistics here and just kind of give you the, the, the scope of what we're talking about in terms of uh, income protection. Now, the Automobile Club of America nationally says that there's a 20% chance that your car is gonna be damaged in a car accident. Of course, we do insure our vehicles. Uh, Firefighters Association, says that the fire truck will show up in front of your house, 3.7% chance that you'll have a fire. US Census Bureau indicates that there is 150 million workers in the United States and 72% of those workers don't have any kind of an income protection if they were to get sick or hurt. And the Social Security Administration says that 24% of all 22 year olds entering the workforce today will incur a disability for 90 days or longer before they actually retire. So it's 24% chance someone's gonna get sick or hurt. So those are pretty high odds. If I was a betting man, I like 24%. Uh, but why do we need to sell disability insurance, income protection, if you will, to our clients? And what I've found in my experience and research is that there are less advisors today talking to their clients about income protection than at any point in the past 40 years. And what I found is that most of the insurance agents, the average age is over 55 years old. And so they're talking to their clients about long-term care, life insurance, which makes perfect sense, but there's this whole generation of young upcoming professionals that no one is talking to about protecting their income if they get sick or hurt. So this is an ideal way of differentiating yourself from other advisors out there that are talking about life insurance and uh, long-term care, property casualty, and so on. But also what this plan does is it helps take care of our clients if they got sick or hurt. It's gonna help pay their bills and their other insurance, mainly their health insurance, when you get sick or hurt and can't work, that is the worst time to lose your health insurance because you can't afford to pay the premium. So this does help pay those monthly bills on a regular basis. But also pound for pound, disability insurance pays more commission 
than any other financial service product that I've seen in my 40 plus years in the industry. And because the renewals continue to pay over and over and over, I get guys that are telling me policies I wrote back in the 90s, I'm still getting renewal commissions on those into their retirement years because those policies are still in force. So uh, you're gonna make more money with disability insurance than many of the other products that you may be selling your clients. But also you kind of owe it to your clients to at least have that conversation because if you've got a close client that you've had for a long time, a close friend, a family member, if they got sick or hurt and you never had that conversation, you'd probably kick yourself for not at least throwing it on the table, say, hey, look, we can offer an income protection plan if you get sick or hurt. And also the people that are buying disability insurance are the people that are more affluent. They've got a little bit higher income. They're usually college educated. They've got uh, a need to protect that income. And they've got cross-selling opportunities as well with uh, approaching clients on income protection when they buy it. But when you think about somebody's income as an asset, Okay, what are we really talking about here in dollars and cents? So if I got a guy, he's 35 years old, he makes $100,000 a year. Over the next 32 years, his accumulative earnings are $7.5 million. That's a, that's a big number to protect. If I were to get sick or hurt, I'm going to take a pretty serious loss uh, in the long term. And so that's what we're really protecting here is a much bigger number. People insure their car, it's worth forty, sixty thousand dollars. They insure their home, it's worth a couple hundred thousand, maybe even a million dollars. Your ability to get out of bed and go to work every day is worth far more than some of those other things that we do insure, even as far as our cell phone or our pets are also getting insurance. But um, there's a little website that you can go to. It's called What's My EIQ. Dot org. What's my EIQ? What's my earned income quotient? And you can put your client's date of birth, put their retirement age, put their income, and it'll tell you exactly what their earning potential is. And it can even go one step farther and it'll ask you some personal questions. Do they use tobacco? Um, are they you know, in good health? Do they see the doctor? And it'll tell you approximately um, how long they'll live after that. So if you want to be risky, how do I get my clients engaged? Uh, there's a couple of questions you can throw out there. Just, of course, you want to ask, you know, do you have an income protection plan if you get sick or hurt? That's the easy way. And, and, and then you got to wait because nobody's ever asked your client this probably. They go, what, what are you talking about? Do you have an income protection plan? And say, well, you know, how long could you last without your income? And you know, what do you got in the war chest is a good phrase that I like to use. And then wait, because again, they're, they're now painting a picture like, wow, what does this look like? Well, maybe I could last six months. Maybe I could last a year. Where would the money come from when that runs out, if you're not better and back to work again? Well, I have a affordable plan that could help if you'd like to learn more about it. And it's a softball approach, but people like that softball approach. Back in the earlier years, we would try that real hard line you know what if you got into a massive car accident and messed your back up you start all kinds of horror stories but uh using the softball approach i've found is to be more effective today in uh, easing into the sales process so one of the uh knee-jerk reactions for a lot of clients today is well i got coverage through my work that's which is great i think it's a, a good plan that uh, employers offer a uh, group LTD for a lot of big companies will offer this. But these same folks that have coverage through their work are also in many cases, walking around with a false sense of security. And I'll tell you why. Because an employer paid long term disability policy. If the employer is paying the premiums, I'm collecting 60% of my earnings, but it's also gonna be taxable to me. It's gonna be subject to federal and state taxes. So now I'm not really getting 60% of my earnings. I'm probably getting a lot closer to 42% after taxes. Also, when it comes to group plans, there's a maximum benefit that each group plan is dialed into. It could be a maximum benefit of 6,000. It could be a maximum benefit of 5,000. But if I'm a high wage earner, if I'm earning a couple hundred thousand a year and my plan caps out at 5,000, 
now I'm not even getting 60% of my earnings. So you have to take into account what does my plan pay? And lastly, incentive compensation bonuses are not equated into that factor. Most group plans will just cover your base salary and over time bonus incentive compensation would not be included. So then again, if a big part of your income is from incentive compensation, uh, you're not getting that 60%. Now, this graph right here represents someone who just makes $75,000 a year with 60% group LTD. And as you can see, they start here at $6,250, but after 60% after taxes, it drops them down to $2,625. That's the after tax figure. Well, we can take a little policy and put it right on top and did an additional 1,600 tax-free dollars to bring them back up to 68% after taxes. And this small amount can be done on a simplified underwriting basis. It can be with no exam, no blood, no urine, no tax returns, just a telephone interview. And if the answers are good to the medical questions, the policy is issued within 48 hours. So it's quick, it's easy, and it's again, protecting your clients to make sure they're gonna be able to maintain their lifestyle if they get sick or hurt. So supplemental coverage, if I got coverage through my work is an important thing to look at. Don't ever let, oh, I've got coverage through my work be the end of the conversation because a lot of advisors will just check that box and move on to the next question. We need to get down and find out exactly what their group plan would pay. If they did get sick or hurt, you'd be doing your clients a favor. Now, if you're working in the small business arena and working with small business owners, here's the question we'll ask the small business owner. What would happen to your business if you got sick or hurt and couldn't manage your business for six, eight, 10 months? Would the business be able to sustain itself? Um, would you have to close the doors and then start over again once you got better and back to work again? Um, business overhead expense insurance will reimburse the business what, for all their fixed expenses it, while the owner is recovering from their injury or illness. It covers things such as the, the lease on the building, the employees' salaries, uh, the insurance premiums, the taxes, everything to keep the business intact while the business owner recuperates. So when he gets better, he has a business to come back to. It hasn't had to shut the doors. The employees are still there. Everything is still intact. Or if he's not getting any better and he's not going to be coming back, at least he's got a business that he could sell that hasn't depreciated because he hasn't been there for six, eight, 10 months. So it helps protect the business owner. They're usually shorter benefit periods. There, there might be a year, maybe 18 months. We can get up to 24 month benefit period, but we can get monthly benefits up to $50,000. So depending on the nature of the business, we'll find out what their fixed business expenses are and be able to reimburse them for that until they get back uh, and take care of their business. Now, a lot of business owners have a particular skill set that usually, if I'm talking to a dentist or a CPA or uh, an attorney, if they're not there generating revenue, they're going to have to shut the doors and this is going to help keep the business open for them. We can get up to $25,000 of monthly benefit, again, on a simplified underwriting basis, no exam, no blood, no urine, just a telephone interview and a $25,000 monthly benefit through uh, a few of our uh, domestic carriers. So we can get it fully underwritten for those higher benefit amounts or older ages or simplified for our younger up to $25,000. The dentists are the number one purchaser of business overhead expense. So these are some other uh, occupations, people that you may encounter, optometrists, veterinarians, physicians, attorneys, CPAs. These are the people that are buying dis disability overhead expense. Okay, we're gonna bring it home here with our last question. How do we engage our clients? I've already got coverage through my work. I've got the maximum amount of insurance I could possibly buy on an individual basis. What do we come back with? Does your income protection plan continue your pension 401k contribution or your 
your retirement plan. When do retirement be benefits usually begin around age 67? At the same time, our disability benefits are stopping. So if I'm a 40 year old and I get sick or hurt, I'm, my retirement plan is essentially frozen in time because I'm gonna take a reduced earnings that I'm not gonna be able to afford to continue my retirement plan. So anybody on the call today that is a, a financial planner, retirement planning is a big part. This is a good conversation to have with your clients. How are you gonna continue your retirement plan living on just a disability plan? Well, we've got disability income retirement security. This is a separate policy. It's not a rider that goes on a policy, one that you can stack on top of any existing coverage that's out there. And so, Again, if you're 40 years old and can't make that contribution, this is going to go into a trust until you reach retirement age or until you get better. Distributions could be made at age 67 or, of course, in cases of financial hardship. But um, once the contribution to the retirement plan has been established, you can pick what type of investments you want that money to go into, depending on your risk tolerance. So if you want to conservatively manage, if you want aggressively manage or a combination of both, the money goes into an irrevocable trust at Bankers Trust of Des Moines. And then at age 60, each year you'll have to report the gain in the plan. So when you make that distribution at age 67, It'll be a tax free and you can put it in whatever you need to help supplement your retirement at that time. So who are the people that are buying this? The CPAs, corporate attorneys, executives, medical professionals, business owners, same people, the same usual suspects that are buying traditional, usually people who have disability insurance are gonna want disability retirement security. Uh, people who are making over $75,000 a year. Now, here's a quick example of how inexpensive this is. So a 45-year-old can get $2,000 a monthly benefit and the premium is only $625. It'll pay up to $4,550 or $54,000 a year. So they'll qualify you up to 15% of your earnings. So if I'm earning $100,000 a year, I can get up to $15,000 of annual, a little over $1,000 a month into my retirement plan for me. Those benefits go into the trust tax-free, but again, we have to report that uh, earnings on the trust each year and then uh, make that distribution at age 67. So, to wrap things up, I'm coming up on 18 minutes here. First idea is, do you have an income protection plan if you're to get sick or hurt? Number two, what would happen to your business if you were to get sick or hurt and couldn't be at the helm for quite a while? How do I protect my business? Business overhead expense insurance. And lastly, does your income protection plan continue retirement contributions if you were to get sick or hurt? And couldn't work. So we've got three quick ideas here. Um, I suggest look at your clients right now and think, who could I approach with one of these three questions and generate a sale? Uh, myself, Steve Jones are available to uh, support you. Here's a list of the carriers. We you know, can pretty much put any occupation a plan together, but here is the contact information. Myself, my trusted associate, Steve Jones, we're able to even point a sale. If you wanna help your clients out, but don't want to become a disability insurance expert, you can throw it right back to us and we can drive the bus for you. We're available for conference calls with your clients anytime you need to answer the tough questions. We'll walk you through the process, make it as simple as possible. I think more importantly, we just wanna make sure that our clients are taken care of and you don't wanna get that call one day that, your client is down and you didn't have that conversation because they're probably gonna to turn to you and say, hey, which one of these policies you sold me is going to uh, take care of my mortgage and take care of my insurance premium. So definitely reach out to your clients, give us a call. And I wanna thank you for taking the time today. Lisa, were there any questions in the uh, chat box at any point? No, we did not have any questions. And I did put your contact information in the chat as well. 
So people Excellent. All right. Well, thank you again for taking the time today. It looks like we're right at 19 minutes. So appreciate the time and we'll see you next time, everybody. Have a great day.